The growing number of diverse, free online media platforms have, to some extent, democratized the ability to share one's own content with the wider world. The internet has become a tool for the dissemination of both professional and alternative archaeological content. Consequently, archaeology found on the web ranges from professional to avocational to blatant pseudoscientific appropriation and misrepresentation. The online prevalence and accessibility of misrepresentations of archaeology increase the probability that pseudoscientific content may serve as the public's most likely exposure to the discipline. The long-term consequences of this trend are likely to involve the growth of negative perceptions regarding the validity and importance of archaeological research. As academic disciplines must increasingly justify their existence and relevancy to the wider world, such perceptions can have far-reaching impacts. The question is no longer should archaeologists address this issue, but how? In an effort to address this phenomenon, I will explore proactive rather than reactive responses to the proliferation of online pseudo-archaeology through the generation of new approaches to online public outreach archaeology endeavors. These include the centralization and promotion of online archaeology resources, archaeologists as public figures utilizing online and social media platforms and news medias, and updating and expanding quantitative survey studies to obtain better insight into public perceptions and interests in archaeology. Only through improved communication efforts in web-based medias can we hope to communicate with the larger portions of the population and better articulate the realities and significance of professional archaeology. For the sake of brevity and because of the preliminary nature of the study, I will contain most of my discussion to the United States. Okay. In the professional world, the critical nature and peer review process of the discipline aids in identifying and weeding out distortions and inaccuracies. The internet, however, is the fastest growing communication medium ever invented and provides anyone with the ability to freely promote their own ideas without having to work through any review process. Consequently, it has allowed those whose approaches are not accepted by professional archaeology to more readily disseminate their ideas to public audiences uninitiated in the nuances of distinguishing professional or credible archaeological resources from pseudoscientific content. This in turn has aided in the promotion of activities or ideas that professional archaeologists would consider unethical, racist, and in some cases illegal. These include the destruction of archaeological sites and desecration of graves for the purposes of looting, couched often as a new form of antiquing, crediting aliens with the construction of monumental architecture, or the invention of new technologies, and the use of corrupted or inappropriate methods in conducting research. In addition, professional archaeologists often show, are often shown in a negative light, depicted as greedy treasure hunters, conspirators in government cover-ups, and closed-minded elitist academics trying to maintain a product monopoly of sorts, while pseudoscientific archaeologists are presented as open-minded seekers of truth and sharers of secrets on how archaeology can profit everyone. Such presentations of archaeology not only paint a false image of the discipline itself, but are also likely to involve a growth of negative perceptions regarding the validity and importance of archaeological research. The impact of various pseudoscientific media depictions of archaeology is in need of, greater, uh, is in need of a greater systematic study, a point which I will return to later, but it is generally accepted that such content does have influence on personal perceptions or understandings within society. If the public obtain most of their information about archaeology from interpretations which they may or may not realize comes from outside the professional discipline, then their understanding of who we are and what we do will be founded on such information. In response to the growth of pseudoscience, archaeologists have produced multiple assessments and critiques of pseudoarchaeology over the course of the last few decades with differing suggestions regarding how we as a discipline should or should not engage with practitioners or supporters of pseudo-archaeological content and address the public queries of pseudoscientific topics. The decision to challenge or ignore instances of pseudo-archaeology, however, continues to be a double-edged so double sword for scholars. Debate with pseudoscientific practitioners, even in the most respectful terms, may only serve to fuel preconceived misconceptions of archaeologists as elitist thugs, trying to monopolize control of archaeological resources. In consequence, we may also alienate communities attracted to certain pseudoscientific theories, now embittered by our debunking of an idea they found some kind of affinity with. Conversely, failure to discredit harmful or demeaning racist or social stereotypes embedded in such accounts or highlight the unethical and destructive nature of looting may result in the growth of such activities and the perpetuation of ignorance regarding the damage of such theories and methods. 
We as a discipline have not found a catch-all solution to this problem, nor are we likely to. Pseudoscience has become too diverse a body of work for one approach. This does not mean, however, that professional archaeology has no large-scale counter-moves against this onslaught. Instead of being only reactive to the, approach of uh, the appearance of such materials, it is time to rethink some of our proactive public outreach approaches. We need to continue to, de to develop our abilities to disseminate our discoveries and make realities as interesting as pseudo-archaeological falsehoods. We can make our work as accessible and comprehensible as pseudo-archaeological content now available, and ult ultimately more easily distinguishable online from inaccurate appropriations of archaeological methods, interpretations, and evidence. Then the public can make informed decisions about the kind of content they want to view instead of assuming anything they see is an accurate representation of our profession. Currently, some of the best public outreach efforts are community-based and event-focused. They are also, however, predominantly face-to-face -face endeavors, reaching people who already have enough time and interest to attend archaeological events. These event attendees, however, represent only a portion of the American public. As the internet has grown and diversified, archaeologists have adapted with some success through the creation of interactive research and site-focused websites, online artifact catalogs, blogs regarding research and pseudoscientific and fictional depictions of archaeology, and the utilization of online news media outlets and social media platforms to disseminate new discoveries and promote events. However, while archaeologists continue to improve their ability to utilize the internet in both their academic and public outreach pursuits, this does not necessarily make it any easier for people unfamiliar with archaeology to distinguish or locate legitimate archaeology content from a sea of questionable and inaccurate depictions of the discipline. If we want our public outreach efforts to reach more portions of the population, we need to rethink how we use the web. Specifically, we need more systematic interorganizational approaches utilizing the infrastru infrastructure, resources, and interconnectivity of our own national and international organizations to better promote, study, and create web-based public content. Currently, web-based public archaeology sites in the U.S. operate largely independent of one another which can make it difficult for the viewing public to successfully find these sites amongst a sea of items found on a Google search. What valid online archaeological content needs is a way to signal boost, a colloquialism referring to the usually online promotion of an event, cause, or piece of information in the hope of drawing more attention to it. With some additional assistance to collate already existing online archaeological content into centralized resource lists, we can better utilize these sources to improve our own accessibility and communication skills in the wider world. These resources, in turn, can then disseminate or rather signal can then be disseminated or rather signal boosted to the appropriate news outlets, interest groups, or popular social media accounts most likely to be interested in specific archaeological content. These sites can then post information regarding our collated archaeological researches, resources for their followers, allowing our, our resources to reach new audiences which may have never found the content otherwise. In addition to public content, centralized resource lists are also helpful for making archaeologists created public outreach, educational and news outlet media guidelines and methods more readily available for others in the discipline. Large-scale coalition initiatives through national archaeological organizations, such as the Society for American Archaeology, the Society for Historical Archaeology, the Archaeological Institute of America, the American Anthropological Association, and the American Anthropological Association, could be the dissemination points of signal-boosted efforts, collecting, organizing, and vetting archaeological content, creating publicly available resource, libra resource libraries, and strategically promoting them on various web-based medias and news outlets to draw the attention to the public. Currently, the SAA is in the process of one such endeavor. In their efforts to make their online public archaeology pages more readily accessible, they have been acquiring survey data from members regarding how their web resources are used, developing more user-friendly web page interfaces, and soliciting new content and updating page links. These institutions already have some kind of infrastructure and resources necessary for such endeavors, as they already engage in large-scale, often inter-organizational, coordinated efforts in both public and professional projects. For example, swift inter-organizational response of various national organizations and others to problematic and pseudoscientific archaeology-related programming by the National Geographic Channel 
has succeeded in having programs permanently pulled from the air or overhauled to include consultation with professional archaeologists. In addition to centralizing online content already in existence, American archaeology needs more individuals willing to act as widely recognized public figures on behalf of the archaeological community and engage with news and social media outlets. Currently, much of the American public would likely struggle struggle to name a single living or deceased professional archaeologist. High-profile public archaeologists could be, in a sense, a form of signal booster, disseminating news, resources, and commenting on issues of concern from within the archaeological community on national media platforms. Cultivating this type of position within professional archaeology is not without a variety of complications that make finding willing and able individuals difficult. It requires copious amounts of people skills, patience, charisma, the ability to think on one's feet, and usually the assistance of more technological and publicity savvy people. In addition, working with news outlets and scientifically inclined television programs have resulted in varying degrees of success and satisfaction with regards to the accuracy of the portrayal of archaeology. Journalists often have different goals from archaeologists, and the ability of both parties to communicate effectively and simultaneously be satisfied is not always possible. The utilization of social media outlets such as Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, YouTube, iTunes, and podcasts are also not without valid criticisms. These outlets are, by deliberate design, free and open to anyone, and consequently some of the content posted or comments made can be racist, sexist, homophobic, or generally vulgar and persecutory in nature. Despite the difficulties one may encounter dealing with news and social medias, both are powerful tools of information dissemination, especially for public figures that can attract the attention of large and diverse audiences. For example, in an effort to better publicly advocate for science literacy in the face of religious fundamentalist attacks on science education in the US, engineer and comedic educational programming host Bill Nye and astrophysicist and director of the Hayden Planetarium Neil deGrasse Tyson have become two of the most visible and vocal advocates for the movement, appearing on numerous news outlets, debating pseudoscientists and politicians, giving public lectures, speaking on social issues related to sexism and racism in education, and signal boosting other scientific and social issue content with their social media sites. Most recently, a Kickstarter campaign to fund a documentary on Bill Nye and his promotion of science literacy in the public and in government policy has become the most funded documentary in the site's history. Developing national public outreach spokespersons positions as part of a larger national organization, online initiatives, would give online audiences distinct individuals to connect with in the same manner that individual archaeologists connect with audiences as part of face-to-face -face outreach endeavors. It would also give publicly inclined archaeologists much needed backing and support. News outlets and social media, despite their complications, are important platforms upon which archaeologists can contribute to the wider discussion of the past connection with the present. Archaeologists continue to grow their online presence and develop more web-based content, a clear understanding of current public perception of archaeology and pseudo-archaeology, as well as our own strengths and weaknesses in public outreach programs, will be vital in providing direction for future endeavors. Consequently, we need to obtain more thorough quantifiable research through survey of our public audiences and ourselves, especially with regards to online content and the impact of pseudo-archaeology. Currently, Quantitative research in public perceptions of archaeology and pseudo-archaeology in the U.S. includes formal and informal survey data regarding predominantly college students and general public perceptions of pseudo-archaeology. There are a number of significant gaps in this body of research, predominantly stemming from the fact that these studies are independent, short-term, and small-scale explorations of subsets of the public. No study is long-term and large-scale. More importantly, the impact of the internet has yet to be studied directly in any large-scale quantitative approach with regards to public perceptions or the amount of professional versus pseudo-archaeological content available. There are, however, a few larger quantitative efforts that offer some insight into general public trends in archaeology. Currently, Ramos and DeGan's 1999 National Phone Survey of 1,016 adults is the most wide-scale study of public perception of archaeology in the U.S. Commissioned by a coalition of U.S. archaeology organizations and published by the SAA, the results of the study indicated 
that the majority of those interviewed believed archaeology was important, should be protected, and was something they were interested in learning about. In addition, over half learned about archaeology through television programs. While this study is an important benchmark in public outreach efforts, at this point it is over 15 years old, lacks any quantifiable study of public perceptions of pseudoscience, and does not directly address many population demographic differences. Fetter's 20 plus years of college student classroom surveys regarding pseudoarchaeology have indicated that despite the growing prevalence of pseudoscientific content, student belief in such material has not grown. While students are aware and even interested in some of the topics discussed in pseudoarchaeology, such as ancient aliens or ancient civilizations with advanced technologies, there are often not many fervent believers in such theories. In addition, only a small number of students confidently dismissed pseudoscientific claims, while a large portion of the student survey population instead chose to mark that they did not know or had no opinion on such topics. The trends of these studies are encouraging, but also indicative of a need for more thorough quantitative research regarding where the public is getting information on archaeology and what they like and dislike about in-person and online public archaeology outreach efforts. Many archaeologists have come to recognize that public outreach, which allows diverse populations to connect with the past in meaningful ways, understand its relationship with the present, and provide the intellectual tools to draw their own conclusions are the ethical responsibilities of the discipline. Archaeologists work in the only discipline to systematically study humanity through all space and time, acting as a conduit through which the past reaches the present. If we do not take the time to grow our abilities to communicate insight on that perspective to the wider world, then distortions of the past, dismissal of its importance, and distrust of archaeological and scientific methods for the benefit of particular political and social agendas will only grow. For example, over the course of the last few years, the US Congress has introduced a number of pieces of legislature gaining traction that call for drastic cuts in the social science monetary support in federally funded research grants. Most recently, Congress also proposed a bill that will gut protections for cultural and environmental resources in the planning and execution of transportation-related construction projects. Our best defense against such policies is a well-informed public that recognizes the potential negative long-term impacts of such approaches and the significance of various scientific endeavors. It is therefore imperative that we make it clear to the public on whom we depend for political and financial support, stewardship of archaeological sites, and for the future of professional archaeologists, what it is we do and why it matters, and endeavor to better address their needs and interests in the past. Thank you.